just a quick heads up. This collection of stories is a creepy kids story collection. These are all stories I did way, way back on my channel. I'm talking end of 2019, beginning of 2020. And they were some of the first stories I ever narrated. And as I was kind of looking at my stories and lists of things to do, I kind of thought I would like to redo them. So give them another chance on the channel. And since they're kind of short, there's a lot of them in this video, just FYI. So that all said, this is a creepy kids collection, stories of creepy things kids have said, creepy stories with kids, etc. And I simply hope that you all enjoy. I just heard about this subreddit from Matthew Santoro, and it reminded me of a story from when I was a toddler. I'd almost forgotten it until now, and I thought it would be nice to share it here. My parents used to bring this story to the table whenever people talked about the supernatural at family reunions. This happened very often due to many people in the family claiming to have had an encounter with paranormal beings, or sightings of extraterrestrial presence. My mom says that she never believed in anything of that nature, which is why, to this day, she still gets the chills when telling the story of when I was a toddler and talked about... him. The first instance my parents recall this was one night when they were sleeping in their bedroom. I must have been like one and a half years old since I was in my nursery room due to my mom being pregnant with my sister. They heard a rat-like chewing noise in the living room and quickly got up to check it out. When they turned the lights on, they saw me sitting by the cupboard with the box of cookies between my legs and a cookie in my hand. They were surprised that, at my age, I didn't mind being in the middle of a dark room at night. And they say they remember asking me questions in the same way you do to young children where you make a baby voice to be cute and don't really expect an answer. Until at one point, my dad asked if I was being brave because I knew my guardian angel was looking over me. To which I replied, he. This caught them off guard, so they tried to ask me who he was, but I just repeated, he, without giving any sign as to who I was talking about. According to my mom, since there was nobody else in the house... They both assumed I was talking about an imaginary friend, and they just let it go. In the second instance, which is when my mom started to get really creeped out, was weeks after this incident. They realized they had to keep cookies, candies, etc. in the upper cabinet and out of my reach. Now, I've loved cookies since forever, but I never threw a tantrum for not getting them, even when they were in sight. My parents say that they were happy I wasn't one of those kids. At least until they found out why. This occasion was in broad daylight. My dad was at work, so it was my mom who experienced this. She was busy doing house chores, but would come into the living room every now and then to check on me while I was playing. She says that from the other room, she would hear me babble, as if I were talking to someone, but that when she went into the living room, I would go silent. She assumed I was just babbling nonsense, so she'd go back to do laundry or wash dishes and whatnot, knowing that as long as she could hear me, I wasn't up to something. This was until one time I stopped talking while she was gone, and she says that, for a moment, she didn't realize I was quiet, and by the time she did and came to check on me, I already had a cookie in my hands. She remembers searching around the room to see if I could have somehow made a ladder of drawers or picked up a leftover cookie from somewhere, but everything in the room was clean and orderly. 
She still doesn't know how I could have possibly gotten the cookie, if not by some paranormal activity. Eventually, she asked me how I got the cookie, and all I said was, he. This strange situation of me getting cookies out of nowhere happened a few other times in the next couple of weeks. But now, other people were home. In essence, my grandparents, uncles, cousins, etc., which, to me, added credibility to my parents' story, since those relatives actually confirm that no one ever gave me cookies, because my parents had told them not to, and they could have sworn they never saw me go anywhere near the cupboard to get them myself, or else they would have tried to have stopped me. My dad says he even started to believe I was hiding a few cookies somewhere I could reach, so that I wouldn't have to wait for them to give me one, but now says that he doesn't truly believe I could have plotted that at such an age. Either way, they found the whole thing creepy, and my dad decided to stop buying cookies altogether, which seemed to work for a time. The next, and allegedly also the last time it happened, was weeks before my sister was born at least three months after the first incident. This is also the creepiest event for my mom. She says she was just relaxing on the couch watching TV while I played on the ground with a toy that I got for Christmas, until eventually I said, hungry. She used to have a schedule for when I was supposed to eat, so she told me I had to wait, and vividly remembers that I scowled turned around angrily, babbled something, and then she heard someone whisper, Cookie. I swear I see her shudder every time she says this part, so I can tell she really believes that she heard it. Now, as I said before, she's not a superstitious woman, and still says that she's unconvinced about the paranormal, but she says at the time she just wanted to be safe, so she told my dad to buy cookies again. They say that after this, it never happened again. They never found me with a cookie that they didn't give me themselves, and I never mentioned him again. But they both still find it creepy, and cannot explain what happened during that time. My dad says that since whoever he was never did anything malicious to me or to them, maybe it was a guardian angel of sorts. Or at least he prefers to believe that over any other alternatives. When I was younger, sometime in elementary school, we had moved into a new house from our previous trailer. I was a scaredy cat as a kid, and I have memories of being scared and having nightmares in the trailer, but nothing like what I experienced in the new house. Within the first month of living in the house, I'd started to see what I can only describe as a shadow figure with a fedora. I never gave him a name or even gave him too much thought throughout the day, mostly because I was scared of him. He lived in my closet, and he gave me terrible night terrors, all with him as the centerpiece. Eventually, my parents got tired of rushing into my room in the middle of the night to calm me down, so they just let me sleep with them in their room. I don't remember any instances of him trying to harm me, in waking life. All I can remember are the night terrors that he gave me. There's one in particular that I still remember in vivid detail today. To understand the dream, here's a little context. I live in Texas, and my grandmother's house at the time had woods next to it with very big trees. I remember being creeped out by this one particular tree because it looked a little like a silhouette of a man hushing with his finger. That's the context. 
and now to the dream. In this dream, I was standing on my grandmother's porch. There's a very dim porch light as my only light source, and I can barely see into the yard. What I do see is the tree, right in the front yard, instead of in the woods where it was usually. Under the tree, I saw the silhouette of the man that lived in my closet. I couldn't see his face as the tree shade engulfed him in shadows. I do, however, notice him lean forward and do the same hushing motion with his fingers, telling me to shh. After that, the wind started to pick up and he faded away like a mist. The leaves in the tree began to shake violently from the wind, and eventually the leaves turned into bats and then flew away leaving the tree looking dead. 18 years old, and these dreams still come to me in flashes sometimes. They genuinely send chills down my spine, just thinking about some of these dreams. I still have some of these nightmares to this day, but none necessarily scare me as much as those I had as a kid. The dreams that bother me nowadays are more disturbing or gruesome than creepy. And to this day, I don't know whether I just had an overactive imagination as a kid, or if something was really following me and giving me these night terrors. Since being very young... My brother Jamie would often do or say strange things. There are many instances, but these are the ones that I remember most clearly. He was, and remains, a very thoughtful and intelligent child, often deep in thought. I first noticed that you could be cooing and playing with him, and suddenly he would cloud over with a deadpan expression and it could take minutes to get his attention again. As he started stringing sentences together, he sat down with my mom and told her, Do you remember before, Mommy? She said, Before when? To which he replied, Just before, when I had a different Mommy. My mom simply told him that she was his only Mommy, and he didn't say anything anymore. He then spoke to me, and told me that he remembered when I came out of Mummy's tummy. I told him that he couldn't remember that because he wasn't born yet. He got pretty irate with me, and said, No, not when I was born this time. Before. I asked him what he meant, and he said, Before, when I wasn't your brother, when I was Mummy's brother a long time ago. This left me pretty shook, as in 2004, over a decade before my brother was born, my uncle, my mom's brother, who was also named Jamie, passed away. Due to the suddenness and trauma caused by his death, it's an extremely sore subject, and it's rarely ever discussed, so there was absolutely no way he could have known about him. Then, one day on the way home from the park, around three years old, Jamie asked me, You know when you die? I was taken aback, but I said, Do you mean what happens after? He said, I've been thinking about it, because I think it's really dark forever, and you can't see anything. I explained to him in a child-friendly way the different beliefs that people have, such as heaven and hell, nothing, ghosts, reincarnation. And when I told him about reincarnation, he nodded and said, Yes, it sounds nice, but it takes so long. When I died last time, I had to stay the same for ages before I was a baby again. Honestly, I was super spooked. Jamie is six now, and still he will speak about things that he really shouldn't understand, but does. 
People often remark how knowledgeable he is about the world around him. Maybe that's just the way he is. Or maybe it's because he's seen it all before. I suppose I'll never know. But all the comments that he's made, and even in his mannerisms and behavior, we all have thought that perhaps Jamie is Uncle Jamie. I don't know if this really belongs in this subreddit, but here goes. I have a pretty great memory of my childhood, especially of the things that had a lot of impact on me. Since I was a child, four to five years old, I've had sleep paralysis, but I can recall when it started. Once I had this dream, and for the first time I was very aware that I was dreaming, and so the first thing I remember trying to do was flying, and I did it, but just for a little while. After that, for some reason, I thought I wanted to see how I looked in my dreams, and I started looking at my hands. And then I created a mirror so I could have a proper look, but then when looking at myself in the mirror, everything turned to black, and I started listening to a deep voice. I didn't recognize the voice, nor do I remember exactly what it said at the time, but I know it left me really scared, to the point where I just curled up on that void and started screaming that I wanted to wake up. And finally, I did. I woke up, but I couldn't scream and I was gasping for air, and there was still something black around me. I knew I was awake because I felt the air, but I couldn't move, and I screamed for my mom, but no sound came out. I had never felt this scared before. After that, for days, I wouldn't look at mirrors without starting to scream for my life. My mom tells me that I begged her to get rid of all the mirrors in our house, which she did not, so... She had to go with me to the bathroom, and I stopped entering my parents' room if I was alone. After some weeks, or maybe a month or two, I don't remember exactly, but some time had passed, although not a lot, I once again had one of those dreams where I was aware that I was dreaming. I don't remember exactly how it went, but I know that at some point I looked at my hands and suddenly everything went dark again and there was the voice. It was again deep and scary, and I forced myself to wake up, and again I couldn't scream or move or do anything. I don't remember how many times I had dreams like that. The void would always embrace me, and the voice would be there talking to me. And after that, I would wake up trying to breathe and scream and run away, and I couldn't. I started avoiding mirrors altogether, or looking at myself. At the age of six, I started biting and hurting myself every time I looked at my body. And then I made it stop. One night, I had that voice and darkness appear in my dreams again. And instead of crying, I screamed at the voice to leave me alone. To disappear. I screamed so much that I woke up screaming, and after that... I never had the same dream again. My mom remembers that night, and she says that afterwards I had a headache, and I said that I was seeing many colors, and that it made my head and eyes hurt. I still had episodes of sleep paralysis after that, until my adult life. I still currently get them, actually, but less regularly. I still had difficulties looking at myself in the mirror or looking at my own body, although I gradually got better. But that voice never appeared in my dreams again. I still wonder what that voice was saying to me that left me so scared, and I still wonder why it stopped after I screamed at it. As a child, 
I frequently suffered from awful nightmares. I would dream almost nightly of a young person being hurt, murdered, or just straight up dying in some way. It led to my mother keeping her door unlocked at night, so I could crawl into bed with her instead of waking her up. It would drive me to hysterics. It was the same girl every night. I could only make out that she was young, blonde, and always the same every single time. She felt really familiar, but I figured it was because she was the same girl in all of my nightmares. At one point, they stopped. It was a few weeks after this that my cousin stayed the night, as my aunt was going out of town. She had a lot of medical issues, but they were managed by medication. That same night, I had another nightmare, a repeat of what had already happened. I woke up to my cousin sitting in the corner of the room, soaked and crying and begging for me to go get my mother. I later realized that this was sleep paralysis. As I went to go wake up my mom, I found my actual cousin on the living room floor having a violent seizure. If I hadn't woken up that night, she would have died. She had fallen on our hardwood and had a head injury from the banging. It was fixable, but it wouldn't have been if I hadn't caught her then. I was in the hospital, and I noticed that my cousin looked similar to the girl that I always dreamed about. I can't pinpoint if it was really her in my dreams. The dreams were always very blurry, but I didn't have one again. Personally, I believe some angel or ghost gave me a premonition that saved her life. My grandparents bought a house that was once owned by a creepy, evil old guy in, like, the 70s. Now, my mom's side is very superstitious. When they moved in, strange things would happen. Once, when the family was watching TV in the living room, my uncle told my grandfather that a man was watching them. But when my grandpa went to look... Nobody was there. Strange things like that continued to happen, and here are a few that happened to me. Flash forward to when my sister and I were born in the 80s. My mom told me that every night, at the same time, I would wake up and just start singing to somebody. Keep in mind that I was a toddler at that time. I'd gotten to the point where every night my mom would wake up and tell the person that I needed to sleep and to please leave me alone. We soon moved away, but every summer my sister and I were shipped to my grandparents' house. In one instance, we were sleeping in my grandma's bed when my sister woke me up. Sissy, there's a man in the rocking chair. No, there's not, I told her. But when I looked, sure enough, there was a man in the rocking chair, staring at my sister and me. He put his fingers over his lips and just said, Shh. We stayed under the covers that night. Throughout the years, small instances would happen. The man would return, but he would bring a friend. Dark shadows would hover over my grandmother when she slept, I saw a figure walk across the doorway when everyone was asleep. My dog would chase random things, and the air in the den would be very heavy. To this day, I refuse to be alone in that house. A few years back... When my son was four and my daughter was two, my son went through a phase where he would claim his great-great-grandfather would come to visit him. Not wanting to encourage or feed into it, 
because it sort of creeped me out, I'd usually just listen and say okay, and then brush it off. Finally, one day, I asked a few questions. I asked my son what his name was, and he told me, he doesn't want you to know his name. Okay. So I asked what he looks like, and I get a... He's tall, almost to the ceiling, because he floats, and he talks, but not with his mouth. That night, we're all three in the living room, and he brings him up again. Almost exasperated, trying not to be freaked the hell out, I asked, Okay, well, where is he now? Both kids simultaneously focus on one point on the ceiling way across the room, and then proceed to follow it with their eyes until they finally land right next to me on the couch. And my son tells me, He's right next to you, Mommy. Fast forward about six months, and we're eating dinner, just the three of us, and my back is to our open laundry room door. My daughter is sitting across from me eating, but she keeps looking over my shoulder, so I ask her what she's looking at. She tells me, there's a man in there. I turn, look, and then say, baby, there's no one in there, it's okay, just eat your food. She says okay, goes back to eating, looks back up, covers her eyes, and then peeks through them and tells me, but I see him. Great-great-grandfather stopped coming around shortly after, and neither kid has any recollection of it now. I wish I could say the same. Back when I was either six or seven years old, I had a nightmare. A nightmare that changed everything. One night, I stayed up with my father watching alien movies. Stuff got too real, so I went to sleep. A few hours later, I woke up due to a horrible dream that I had. I called out for help, but no one came. Even the ones that I shared a room with didn't wake up. I gave in and decided to go to my parents' room. I got out of bed, turned on the lights, and then I quickly ran across to my parents' room. Mom? Dad? No response. I got on the bed and tried waking my mom up, and she didn't wake up. I tried my dad, and fortunately he did wake up. We tried to wake my mom, only to find that she had passed out. We called for help and then went to check on my sister and the housekeeper, and they were both unresponsive. Help arrived, the neighbors and the watchmen. Well, later on, my father discovered that the housekeeper had forgotten to remove the charcoal grill, and it had led to the poisoning of the air due to the carbon monoxide. That's why everyone passed out. I'm kind of glad that I stayed up and watched the movies with him. Otherwise, I would have probably had a peaceful night and woken up to a house full of dead people. I'm new to this sub, but I think that this belongs here. A few nights ago, as I was getting my two-and-a-half-year-old ready for bed, she started saying strange things. It started with her talking about her other daddy, or sometimes her old dad. I kind of played along for a minute, but that's when it got creepy. She kept saying that she was a bad baby. We told her, no, you're a good kid. And then she said, no. I'm bad. Bad babies start fires. That was when I stopped playing along, as I actually had a house burned down when I was a teenager. So I don't play when it comes to fire. I was really just wondering if anybody else has had a child say something like this, and what would the proper response be? We just told her that 
she's not a bad girl and that she's actually a very good girl and very smart, and that fires are dangerous and could hurt people, and also that she only has one dad, and that's me. She hasn't said anything else like this since. My four-year-old son started to talk about an imaginary friend named Bobo when he was about three and a half. He would say things about what Bobo tells him or where he saw Bobo playing. So I asked him what Bobo looked like and he said, just like me, but with black hair. My son is a blonde. Bobo started to become a more frequent topic. He would say things like, Bobo is at the door, let him in. To which my husband would open the door and say, Oh, come in, Bobo. Ha ha, and we would all laugh. Recently, about two months ago, my son told me that Bobo now looks different. He has alligator teeth and skin. He keeps talking about the things that Bobo does, and he'll say, Bobo is at the door. Then, one day, he goes, Bobo has a friend. I asked him what Bobo's friend's name was, and he says, oh, his name is Bobo too. We also moved recently, and for the first two weeks, he would say, the Bobos don't know where I live. Now, this week, he stopped mid-play and goes, Do you hear that? I need to get the door. The Bobos are here. He then runs to the door and opens it, then counts to 16 and says, Wow, 16 Bobos. Now, he's making a picture with glitter glue for his... Uh, friends. Why? Do they have to have such a creepy name? Last week, I was sitting in my living room and talking with a friend. After a while, my four-year-old son asks, Hey, Mommy, who is that guy? And when I look over at him... He's standing at my bedroom door and pointing into my room. No one else was in the house beside my friend, my son, and myself. So I get up, walk over to him, and turn on the light to my room so we can see. He all of a sudden looks confused and says, Oh wait, where did he go? I assume he thought his dad was home, so I replied, and see, baby, there's no one in there. Daddy went to work. I turn off the light and my son says, Wait, see, Mommy, who is that guy? While still looking into my dark room. Needless to say, I slept with the lights on all week. My five-year-old daughter was sleep-talking in kind of angry tones. I went to go wake her up a little and get her back to bed more soundly. She was saying, I don't like you. I kind of rubbed her arm and said her name and she sat up. I gave her a drink of water and asked her if she felt better and wanted to go to sleep. She said, super lucidly, Yeah, I just wish that strange baby over there would stop smiling. Then she went back to bed. So, now I'm dealing with that. My five-year-old is in the bath with loads of toys, and I'm sitting in the bathroom scrolling Reddit. Out of nowhere, he says, Mummy, if you died while I was in your tummy, would I live? I said, 
Well, it depends on how I died. And he left it at that and then goes back to playing. And then I hear him say, and That's my mom. Well, my other mother. And my first mother is dead. I killed her. Want to see the body? His voice then got too quiet to hear. Kid, what the hell? So this was a remade collection of those creepy kid stories I did way, way back whenever I started my channel in 2019, early 2020. Hopefully, you all enjoyed this collection. Honestly, looking back and doing them now, some of these stories are still creepy as hell. Um, yeah, they just, they're honestly kind of terrifying. Um... I don't personally have any memories of when I was a, you know, really young kid. Really, really young. So I don't really have any scary stories to tell you, but I know my parents would tell you that the house we had was, uh, had a kid in it that was, that was, that was a ghost. It was haunted with a kid that would wake my mom up in the middle of the night and such. Um, yeah. I don't think there were ever any creepy stories that involved me whenever I was a kid. Like, things I said, things I did. Uh, I really don't remember anything from back then so unfortunate but it is what it is right our memories can only go back so far and at 30 it's it's hard to remember what i did yesterday <laughs> i hope you all enjoyed this collection and if you did please do hit that thumbs up button and if you didn't well i'm sorry it, it, it does it, i can't i can't win them all it doesn't happen all the time right um if you want me to redo more older stories let me know i have one more planned i think maybe two i don't remember i have to look at my calendar uh the next one's in february uh, it's it's another collection like this. It's pretty large, but yeah, these are fun. Just redoing old stories I did way, way back whenever I was terrible at this. So if you would, please do also consider leaving me a comment. You can leave me a comment with recommendations of topics you would like to see for videos. That would be greatly appreciated. I love collecting that information. And also, if you feel so inclined and really want to support the channel, you can go to hit the join button down below or go to my Patreon, where for as little as a dollar a month, you get early access to all my content like this. And special thanks at the beginning of the video, obviously. All that said, my friends, I hope you have a beautiful week. I hope you're doing well. And I hope you're keeping warm out there if you're in a part of the world where it's cold. Or, if you're in a part of the world where it's the opposite of cold, I hope you're staying cool. Keep staying out there, friends. Stay strong. Stay safe. And of course, much love. And as always, sleep well.